Well, here we go with the volume of a prism. Um, first off, I'm going to have some type of a base, in this case, a nonagon, and it's a regular nonagon. The figures don't have to be regular, but we're honestly, we're going to be doing a lot that are. And then we're just going to take this base, and we're going to extrude it or apply a height to it. And that's it. That is all we have to do. Find that area of the base and multiply by the height. And we've got the volume. Well, here we have our nonagon that was extruded into a prism. And that is a right prism. But now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take this figure and we're going to move it like this just like we did with our parallelograms in 2D. We're going to shear it. Or maybe I want to move it on a different axis. Maybe move it along the green axis. And you can see it's going to give us a different shape. But this shape, which we'll call an oblique prism, has the exact same volume as the one before it, before we sheared it. That is, we kept the height or the vertical distance between the bases constant. So that's Cavallari's principle. And exercise number five gives us an interesting way to look at volumes here in terms of unit cubes in the same way that we looked at area in terms of unit squares. And we could just add them all up. Let's take this figure right here and make it easy. Imagine if I could do that with my eyes. And I'd say, aha. Uh -huh. And really, how many times does this unit cube appear in there? I just saw four there, five, six, seven, eight. I could add these all up. And eventually, if I'm really good with my eyes there, I would come up with how many? I counted 18, so did I. And in this case, I'm just using cubic meters. They could be cubic anything. Um, when we say units, it could be miles, kilometers, meters, inches, centimeters. But I just, um, just to give it some reference, let's call them cubic meters. I can write it this way or this way. Well, I'm looking at a regular hexagon here. And when I project its depth, I, of course, have a hexagonal prism. And we're going, to, this is exercise number nine in your text. We're going to find the volume of this figure. We know the volume is base times height. Capital B means the area of the base. So we know that old one-half apothem times perimeter will give us the area of this regular hexagon. So let's just jump right into it. By now, you know there's a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. And you know that it comes from the center where we've got the apothem, the radius. And this is what I would call the half side of what, well, of the hexagon. So the ratio in a 30, 60, 90, by now we all are familiar with the one, two, radical three. And in this given case, if the side is seven and a half, then so is the radius. This, this would, of course, would be half that, three and three quarters. And this is going to be three and three quarters radical three. Whew. Well, that's looking pretty busy. Let's hide that, clean that up a little bit. And let's just do the substitution. Should be pretty straightforward. And again, since the, I know the area of a regular polygon is 1 half AP, I'm going to substitute that in. And my formula becomes 1 half APH for the volume of this prism. And now, and just a direct substitution. And in this case, remember, I have 7 and a half times 6. Here's my 45. I've got 18, which is the height of the prism. And then it's just a calculator exercise. And I'll let you do this one on your own. And you should have come up with this number going to the nearest hundredths place, as you were asked in the exercise. And one thing, of course, I'll always mention if you're having troubles finding this apothem, you could always resort to trig. If you're not good with your 30, 60, 90, although you should be, we know that the tangent of 30 is 3.75 over the apothem. 
if I made that the apothem, and I rearranged the equation so the apothem is 3 and 3 quarters divided by tangent 30. Again, that's your alternate, but it's a lot faster if you can stick with the 30, 60, 90 identity. Well, here we go with a pretty straightforward, would appear, um, volume problem with a rectangular prism where we have three dimensions and you know that we could just multiply the three length times width times height but we're throwing a little curve here we're given 11 inches along with our seven feet and our three feet so I've color coded them differently to make sure we notice the units the red and the blue so we'll call this the God bless America problem because there you go only in America we have such funny units some of you probably did this and that works out pretty good because we could find the corresponding units use all the blue ones inches convert to inches or convert to feet so let's first do this with inches and let me see I multiply all those numbers together get this whopping big number and those are cubic inches now I've got to remember my little conversion here in case I've forgotten there's 1,728 cubic inches in a cubic foot, and this is why. I'm going to cube each side of the equation, 1 foot to 12 inches. When I cube 12, I get 1,728. Easy enough. So let's keep going with this. I'm going to write it this way, as I would with dimensional analysis. I'm showing a conversion factor, so clearly I can... Let me see, what is it, what's next? I'm going to strike out those units, divide those out, and I am left with cubic feet. Okay, how about in the red? Let's go the alternative. Alternative. I'm going to use the red measurements. And does that work? Sure. 11 twelfths, don't go bringing out the decimal. Don't make that a decimal. Just work with fractions here. I can divide out the 3 and then I've got 77 fourths. 77 fourths, I can divide the 4 into 77 I'll get 19 and a remainder of 1. So there you go. I've got 19 and a quarter, as we'd say on the East Coast, cubic feet. And I've got 19.25 cubic feet. So you can go either way, and you should be versed in both. Well, this will be our first composite solid exercise. And this employs the volume addition postulate number 29, which you can read on the left. And that tells us, um, well, just like we did in the last chapter with area addition, we can combine two volumes, or in this case, we're actually going to subtract. And um, well, I'm starting with this rectangle on the floor that you can see, the 12.4 uh, foot by 7.8 foot that has a smaller rectangle cut from it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to extrude it so we can see what our solid looks like in 3D. And we'll pull this up and it looks like a height of nine feet. So we'll go to nine feet and we could even throw a little dimension on that to make sure it's that we've got it. Oh yeah. And that's our, that's our image right there. That's what we're looking for. We can see we've got this rectangular prism cut out of this larger rectangular prism. So now we can get an idea and appreciation for what the figure looks like. Let's, um, let's just do the exercise, or as they say, let's do the math. Okay, I'm going to rearrange the picture a little bit. And again, this is exercise number 19. I've got a smaller diagram here on the right. And let's say, oops, let's do this. We're going to say it's the large prism minus the volume of the small prism. And if I substitute, I know that capital B, or area of the base times the height, is the volume of a prism. So I'll use B2 for the larger prism, B1 for the smaller prism. And you notice in this case they both have the same height, so I'm going to factor the height out. And now I'm going to make a drawing just um, say a top-down view here and if that's what I've got then I can say aha uh -huh, I can uh, got that drawing there let me take this and I'm going to cut this piece out and when I cut that out that's it so that's my act of subtraction 
So right there, that's B2 minus B1. So again, this right now, it's that's B2, the overall larger area. I'm going to subtract that smaller area. So let's just do that. In the green, I've got the dimensions of the larger rectangle. In the magenta, I'm subtracting the smaller rectangle. And I could work that out a little bit, a little bit of multiplication. Notice I'm leaving off the units. We'll analyze that later. And now I've, I've got the area. The 91 and 32 hundredths is going to represent this area. That would be the surface area of the floor, and we multiply it by the height, and that is going to give us a this for a volume, 821 and 88 hundredths cubic feet. And let's just have a quick look here. When we multiplied each of the bases, we were generating uh, feet times feet was generating square feet. And when we finally multiplied square feet by feet, we generated cubic feet. Well, in this exercise, we'll just visualize Cavallari's principle because it's really pretty easy one here. We've got capital B times H, or base times height. Um, if this were a rectangular prism, we'd say length times width by height. And it's the same thing. You can see a 4 by 7 rectangle on the red-green plane extruded 6 inches in the blue direction and then sheared. So there you have it, 4 by 7 by 6. And that is an example of Cavallari's principle.